I'm here at Angera Australia to give you a tour of how fragrances and flavours are put together from the lab right through to production scale. I'm here in a fragrance library room and this is where discussions can often happen with customers about the specific needs of their brief. A perfumer would sit with the brief and the customer with their library of aroma chemicals using various smelling strips to adjust the notes of fragrances up or down given what the client actually wants. As you can see, there's a huge amount of variance and choice available to each customer. When you first want a fragrance, you'll be asked to complete a brief. Now the brief is very detailed because as you can see, there is a huge amount of choice of aroma chemicals that can go into every different type of fragrance. Fragrances typically contain between 20 to 100 different aroma chemicals. So your choices are almost limitless, except of course for incompatibilities and bad aromas. So you meet with the chemist with your detailed brief. They'll go through a selection and blending process. You'll be given strips to smell and explain to the chemist uh, how you would like to adjust your fragrance or aroma profile up or down to achieve your end note. A lot of people think that aroma combinations are very simple and easy to do, when in reality, there's a lot of choice. So it's really up to the fragrance house who are experts in their field to put the right combination of aromas together for a desirable fragrance or flavor in your finished product. I'm here in the perfumer's lab and this is what we call a fragrance organ where the aromas are all lined up in their respective families. The fragrance chemist can then put the sample together using various aroma chemicals and create variants for the client to choose from. As an example, here are three variants. So you start with the base aroma and you'll adjust the notes to suit the needs of the brief and the client. Then you'd normally provide a few samples with the variant notes for them to select from. Variants are also useful so that the client can help direct a fragrance in a certain direction. They may prefer the notes of this blend but still want additional changes, for example. Or they may want to combine some of the top notes from this variant with the base notes in this variant. It helps guide the direction of the aroma changes so the fragrance chemist can more accurately provide the blend to suit the client's needs. Remember when you're dealing with this many different aroma compounds, the choices are almost limitless. So providing variants like this to help guide further selection and development not only helps shortcut the process, but really isolate what the client is looking for in their finished product. It takes more than just training to be a perfumer. To be a perfumer, you need to have what is known in the industry as a nose. The ability to discern very fine notes of fragrances and flavors so that you can create the many different combinations required to suit your client brief. Just as a cosmetic formulation may contain 12 to 25 ingredients, a fragrance can typically contain between 20 to 100 different aroma compounds. And it takes very precise measuring and ability to discern the different notes to get it just right. A simplistic fragrance such as a vanilla, which only has one uh, one component, one theme to it, might just have, say, 10 different ingredients in there. But a more complex fragrance, uh, fine fragrance, for example, you know, like an eau de toilette fragrance for eau de toilette, um, is a, can have like 60 to 80, 60 to 100 different uh, components in there, a mixture of um, natural materials and other aroma compounds. And in fact, it's that complexity that gives it the sophistication that we enjoy wearing. 
sometimes we answer briefs off the shelf. And what that means is that we have a library of fragrances that have already been created and are available to, to multiple customers. Now, for example, if a customer requests a fig fragrance, we might select three different figs because one might be a lot more fruity and green in its top note. Another one might be blended with woody or ambery base notes to give it a point of difference. And a third one might have some spices blended, blended through it to give it more of a festive feel, for example. And by giving the customers that variety, it helps them decide actually what type of thing they're looking for. So I could start with this one, for example, and then tell you that I want the notes to head in a certain direction. And then you can adjust it in your lab to suit my needs. Absolutely. That's when shelf work becomes development work. That's when, that's when I try my best to interpret the description that you've given me. So basically, you're putting my thoughts, my ideas, my words into a bottle. Absolutely. This one's a greener note, isn't it? Yes, it's a very green fig, and it has some uh, coconut uh, qualities to it as well. Get that a little, I definitely get the freshness of the green. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet one. That's a video one. Yes. yes. So as you can see, even with a general description such as fig, there are three very distinct variants on the table here for discussion. And then Rebecca can adjust them further to suit the individual needs. So Rebecca, how important is it when you get a brief to make sure that someone is really open and honest with you about needs like heat sensitivities, pH issues, if they're, if they're formulating something with an extreme pH, uh, other climatic conditions that the product might go through? Well, without those parameters, we're really just wasting our time sending samples back and forth that might not work at all in your end product. And what about substantivity, like a wash-off product compared to leave-on? How, how important is that for you to know as a perfumer? Yeah, it's important to know what the end product is going to be or what the range of end products will be because we will formulate them differently, uh, whether they need more top notes or... Um, more base notes, for example. When you have to cover some aromas of a formulation, how important is it for you to receive a sample of that product? <laughs> or, for instance, if you're working with a fragrance to try and cover the aromas created when DHA develops in the skin, how important is that for you? Yeah, well, and if we can't smell the base, then how can we know if we're effectively covering it? It's very important. And what's the typical turnaround time on a more generic type of off-the-shelf with a few adjustment type fragrance? Well, an off-the-shelf project we can probably turn around in about two weeks, but once we start doing development work, it does take a bit more time. So the more unique it is, the more time you need. Absolutely. So Rebecca, how hard is it to match a fragrance? Uh, it really depends on the fragrance and the product that it comes in. So if we're looking at an oil, the complexity depends on the number of different essential oils and the general number of ingredients in the formulation. But when we're looking at extracting the fragrance from an existing product, such as from a cream, uh, the level of complexity increases significantly because the, the rate of um, evaporation of the material is affected by the base and so without the customer's base to work with um, it's very difficult to get a spot on. And how many different countries do you source your materials from? Um, our raw materials come from all across the world. For example, we get our ginger from China, uh, sandalwood comes from Australia and lavender comes from France. And then the quality checks when they arrive? Yep, that, uh, all our products go through quality control uh, to ensure that there is a consistency from batch to batch and to ensure also that um, there's consistency from batch to batch to all outgoing products as well. From the lab, larger samples are made and then quality checks. 
Once a sample is created that's approved by the concept developer, the formula is then carefully and precisely written up, a batch sample is prepared, and it's over to the warehouse for larger scale manufacturing. Because of the complexity of aroma development and the specialised training, experience and abilities you need, fragrances are kept highly secret. The actual formulas taken to create from all these different aroma compounds are kept so secret, even more secret, than we chemists keep our personal care formulations. Okay, so the trace that we're looking at here is actually two different traces overlaid on top of each other. The one in the black is lemon oil and the pink one is sandalwood oil and what it demonstrates is that an essential oil is made up of many different constituents but what you can see is that the main constituents help to determine whether or not it's a top, middle or a base note. In the example of lemon, they're highly volatile materials and that's why they pass through the GC very quickly whereas the sandalwood the main constituents are found right at the end because they're a lot less volatile. Just as you need to do a pilot production batch with any formula you create they also do pilot scale batches of fragrances before a full production batch as well. So the formula would be signed off, the fragrance sample would be signed off that's created by uh, the perfumer and then it would come to this size production here where a pilot is prepared and checked against the sample. This is because the measurements to get the fragrance just right are so precise. As you scale up you can lose some of that precision so we need to check at a pilot level that what was created in the lab will be exactly the same when it gets transferred to a 5 kilo or 100 kilo batch. The very important part is this pilot production level. And if these smell exactly as the perfume are created, it's ready for full scale production. One of the main reasons why you wouldn't want to create your own fragrances is because you simply wouldn't have the capacity to hold all the different aroma chemicals you might need to manipulate your fragrances and create different blends. As an example, this warehouse here holds over 2,500 different aroma chemicals. When a fragrance is put together, it starts by selecting the materials from the shelves in the warehouse, carted on the trolleys, and then over to the mixing area. From compounding as small as five kilo batches, 10 kilos, and 400 kilos, you can see the different capacities required and the hundreds of different aroma chemicals used to make individual aromas possible. Each formulation contains between 20 to 100 different aroma chemicals that's precisely measured and blended to bring about the unique fragrances and flavours requested by the customer. So there you have it, a brief run through of how fragrances are created at a perfume house. So next time you enjoy that shower with your beautiful smelling bath products, when you spray fragrance on yourself, even right down to the personal care, the body lotion that you apply on your legs, every one of these products has a specially created fragrance. Not as simple as you thought, I bet but a fine art in itself. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on what it takes to create fragrances from simple fragrances right through to the luxury perfumes. Happy formulating.